Hey guys, thanks for hanging out for like the whole day. Um, just to make things a little bit like less serious because it's literally the last talk and we're wrapping up. I'm just gonna like hand out wine to people. Like, cause why not? Here, people pleasing. It's on brand. Also, this helps calm my nerves too, so. <laughs> I'm trying to make this as awkward as possible. <laughs> yeah, if you're if you're under 21, maybe don't take one. <laughs> um, okay, was we'll maybe hand out like a few more of these, but if you really really want one, like raise your hand. Yes, and we'll get you one. There, now it'll be more enjoyable. Okay, so, hi everyone. I'm People Pleaser and I'm a digital artist um, building and creating in crypto and Web3 um, and in the serious, like very spirit of professionalism. I've used Comic Sans for my entire presentation today. Um, and I'll be talking about building virality in Web3. So uh, before I begin, I'm going to start with the disclaimer that you're listening to somebody who sold Board Ape at 0.4 ETH, so probably don't listen to me. This is not financial advice. Um, and for those in the audience who might not be familiar with my work, typically on these panels or podcasts and interviews, I usually go over like, my career and story, which starts somewhere where last year I was jobless, and then um, I discovered DeFi, and then my life exploded, and then somehow ended up on Fortune magazine. <laughs> but um, this is just what happened to me, and I feel like it might not be like relatable or necessarily helpful to you guys, so I thought I might switch it up today and talk about something that people might find more useful, which is... Um, I guess like the topic of making things go viral. And so, um, yeah, previously in like Web2 where content was owned by centralized entities, um, the way for things to go viral were often like dictated by the platform, such as using Instagram hashtags, um, buying engagement, paying for promoted posts. And then so if you're someone like me, uh, I literally had zero followers on any sort of platform just about, you know, a year ago. Um, I'm going to share some of my learnings uh, and my experience for how to build virality or make something go viral in Web3. And so, um, what is the role of virality in Web3? Well, I mean, for starters, it can help sell NFTs, build communities, pump tokens in crypto, raise awareness, spread information, Ultimately, I think it like all goes back to making money. <laughs> and so the concept of going viral in Web3 is extremely valuable. Um, we're no longer talking about you know, getting likes or imaginary internet points um, in exchange for some happy brain chemicals. Web3 is literally about turning those imaginary internet points into magic internet money, which is actually can be real money. Um, so yeah, if you're building any type of like product in crypto or Web3, you're probably looking to gain traction or, you know, for your project to go viral. And obviously with Doge, we see, um, you know, the power of the meme or, you know, something going viral translating to real world values. And, you know, sometimes it can outweigh common sense. So, you know, like people don't really, can't really explain why this happened. It just did, and then now Doge, um, which was originally a meme, has now turned into, obviously, over $33 billion mar market cap. So um, what makes something go viral? Well, in my opinion, I think there's usually two factors. There's, like, the meme factor and the cool factor. So it's, like, either something is, like, really meme -y or you look at something and you're like, this is really cool. And those are the main two things that usually make people want to share something with someone else. And then so this brings me to the topic of memes. And memes are probably one of the most important components of Web3. Um, our generation has somehow created an entire culture and language around this. And of course, with the help of the internet, 
it is now one of the cheapest and most efficient ways to spread information. So, um, you know, to make a meme, you probably have to understand it first. And so, um, in dissecting a meme, there's usually several elements to what could make a meme successful, but um, it's essential to look at each component. Uh, you know, obviously, I'm no meme PhD, but <laughs> I try my best, and I've narrowed it down to these like few elements. For example, memes are usually funny, and they're relatable, and exaggerated and absurd, and then last but not least, there's always an element of serendipity to a meme. And so, um, the, the people pleaser playbook, or sort of like how I go about things is simple really, like most of the time I see myself as a sponge and then I'm absorbing content constantly, and whenever I see something go viral um, and interesting or it, like it lingers the mind, I always um, ask myself, what was it that made it cool and interesting? And then I try to dissect and extract that and then apply it to my work. And so um, an example of this is I often watch like Japanese commercials. They're super like ridiculous and over the top and often unintentionally become memes. And um, so I, I basically, if you've ever followed my earlier DeFi animations, I often incorporated elements of this into the work itself. Uh, which brings me to um, one of my most viral pieces to date, which was the X times Y equals K video for Uniswap, um, which now has about like 700,000 views on Twitter. Within like the first 24 hours, it got over half a million views. And I mean, obviously, uh, Uniswap uh, V3 was already in itself a very, very highly anticipated um, announcement. But uh, basically, when I'm making my videos, I have one goal in mind, which is to evoke a certain reaction from my audience, and that reaction is, uh, what did I just watch, basically? And so, <laughs> usually when that is the reaction that people have when they watch my videos, I consider it a success, um, because that's actually uh, what makes them watch it again, and then also want to share it with their friends. They're like, well, can you explain this? I don't know what I just watched, and then, you know, so it's kind of like a way to, like, make it pass on basically and then so uh, but I mean I'm, that was uh, on the meme side of things but for the cool factor you know I obviously incorporated a lot of symbolism and easter eggs um, into the animation uh, which I think were all probably things that helped make it go viral um, anyway and then so my thinking behind doing the fortune magazine uh, which was like the August September issue um, which also went like pretty viral was, um, I mean, basically I just like put a bunch of crypto anonymous influencers on the cover. So with each of these influencers having like, you know, between like 50 to 100,000 followers, and then they're obviously going to get excited and tweet about it. Um, the thing essentially markets itself. So <laughs> it's like a self-marketing um, formula that I have like come up with uh, to, I guess, help make it go viral. Um, and also part of why people love memes is like it feels like an inside joke and then so, you know, part of like putting, you know, all these people on the cover of a major magazine feels like putting a giant inside joke onto something um, mainstream and I feel like, you know, that's also basically what helped set it off. And so about like the cool factor, um, sometimes people share and spread content just because, simply because it's cool. And so, I mean, taste and coolness is obviously like very varied from person to person. It's extremely subjective, but in tackling how to create something cool, um, my suggestion is similar to that of dissecting memes. Basically, when you watch something cool, just try to think, why was this cool? And then try to extract elements of that and apply it to your own work. But um, I don't know, it's like, I can't teach you how to be cool. Uh, you either have it or you don't. <laughs> And um, I mean, obviously, not all of my content has gone viral or proven to be successful. And so I think it goes to show that, you know, even when I spend most of my time trying to understand and recreate um, something viral, obviously, it's um, really a hit or miss. You know, it's like um, impossible to predict whether something will work. And so, or maybe it just wasn't that cool or funny. <laughs> but... I mean, who really knows, right? All in all, um, when you're creating something and hoping for it to go viral, just ask yourself this question. Is it Mimi or is it cool or both? 
Um, and last but not least, the one element that nobody can artificially recreate or predict is the element of serendipity. And oftentimes, we can estimate whether something might go viral, but no one can know for sure because you can't really predict the behavioral um, patterns of a large, large group of people, which is essentially your target audience, right? So, I mean, I guess that's um, also what makes memes and like the whole space of Web3 and everything in between so magical as well, because there's always that one element that we can't um, properly predict or recreate. Um, and then last but not least, if you've had some success or made some money during this bull run in the land of Web3 in general, uh, I think it's a positive sum game, so it's always good to give back. I try to, um, you know, spread this message in all of my talks and everything. I mean, creating wealth in Web3 is really cool, but it's even cooler to share it. So, yeah, that's it. And that's last talk, so we can all drink more wine and, like, loosen up and stuff. <laughs>